Perhaps the most striking feature of Carnatic music is its texture, the texture of the music that is characterized by oscillations and shakes and many other movements that are generally called by the term gamaka. Now, if we recollect, we, we, we saw that two fundamental ways of making music are melody and harmony. Now, when you take a single note, for instance, okay, or, now this is G, the pitch G on a standard western scale. Uh, now when you have, uh, when you adopt the harmonic way of making music, this single note can take on many colors. If you look at this, uh, I'll, I'll use this online keyboard. So this is G. Uh, now when you have harmonic uh, harmony at your disposal or when you are trying to create music using harmony, this single note G can take on many colors depending on what other notes are used to accompany it as harmony and I am using E as its harmonic accompaniment. Now this is how it sounds. Suppose I were to take D and E as the harmony. Now this is the basic swara basic pitch that we are using is G and these two are the harmonic accompaniment. So it sounds like this or if I were to take say this then it would sound like this or if I were to take this and this it would sound like this. So many many possibilities exist in harmony when uh, with a single note. You have a single note and it assumes as many colors as you vary the harmonic accompaniment. But in melody, what do you do with a single note? When you have, when your music is melodic as it is in the case of Carnatic music, what can you do with a single note? This is 
This is G. Not much melody is possible. What the one thing you can do is vary the loudness and softness. And that in fact is a very important aspect of Carnatic music performance. But in terms of music making, a single note cannot achieve much. This loudness and softness. This is what we can do at most when your music is melodic with a single note. In the movement from one note to another, there much variation is possible. So if I were to just take two notes, this is one. It's more gentle, but with just two notes, movement between these two notes, there is much possibility lies here. And when we have more than two notes, obviously the possibilities increase. Now Gamaka, as I said, is essentially various ornamentations, as this called, that is applied to notes, to swaras, which gives it a, uh, a completely different flavor and feel. Let me demonstrate what Gamaka can do to a certain set of notes. I will take a tune. This is a this is a very well it was a very very famous song. It's a, it was a great hit. It went viral on the YouTube a few years ago. The tune is like this. I'm sure all of you there would identify this tune. This I'm sure you would know what the song is. This is a Kolaveri song. In terms of notes, it is Now the same notes. Just these notes. These are the notes. If I were to use them with gamakas. can do to the set of notes. So what then is Gamaka? Gamaka is a generic name. Now when I just said 
This is one kind of gamaka. This the swara is riga, but we sing it as riga. Magari, magari, instead of magari, riga, magari, ma magari. Gagari ri sa ri ga ma ga ri sa sa da ra sa ra sa ra 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 ra. So there are many kinds of these uh, ornamentations. Ri ga. Maga, maga, sa ma maga, gari ri sa. So, the generic term for all this uh, ornamentation is kamaka. So, it is swaras, it is notes that are sung or performed with gamaka. It is a note that has a gamaka or this ornamentation. But it is always the context of a raga. The raga determines what kind of gamaka a particular note will have in a particular context, in the particular context of a phrase. In the context of a raga again, as we saw earlier, a raga essentially admits of certain swaras and excludes others. So, among those swaras that a raga has, some of the swaras will have gamakas. Some of them will not have gamakas. Both are equally important to the raga's identity. And what gamaka a swara will have that again depends on the context. So, if for instance there is this very famous kriti which you have heard earlier in this course, Nada Tanum Badisham Shankaram. Now, here again the notes are the same actually as uh, I sang earlier. Riga Gamapa Mapa Mapa Magari. This is the notation for this line. So the Ga, as you can see, there are three kinds of ornamentation for it within the single line. Nada Riga Gamapa Ma. Now this is a different kind of Gamaka. Nada Talum Hanisham Gamapa Mapa Mapa Magari Talum Hanisham Shankaram Mapa Magari Riga Gamapa Mapa Mapa Magari So that the Ga within the single line has three different ornamentations, so to say. Three different kinds of gamakas are applied to the same swara, same swara. In fact, when we discuss gamaka and we talk of swaras being given gamakas or swaras being given ornamentation, there is a fundamental uh, element of uh, I mean, it is quite misleading actually, because it is not as if we have the swara and then we apply the gamaka. That is not how it is. That is not how it is taught. That is not how it is absorbed. That is not how it is heard. The swara and the gamaka are an integrated whole. They are not separate. We, we can talk of them in situations like this when we are trying to understand the music, that we have the Gandhara, 
ga sari ga this is the swara ga and that ga actually if you see a uh, a uh, in that movement you cannot actually hear the the absolute the pitch of the gandhara itself ma uh, uh, this is the pitch you cannot really hear it anywhere in this ma do we say ga uh, this is the ga now why do we say that it is ga sa re ga do that particular pitch of gandhara is not really heard we say it because this gandhara na this movement exists it is there between ma and re re ma re ma re ma re ga so we, that is where the gandhara is that is where the ga is so talking of swaras and then gamakas which we say are applied on them that there is a an, an element of um it is as i said misleading to talk about it like this if we have it clearly in our heads that this is only uh, an attempt to analyze the music and has no um truth beyond that that it it, it is it does not reflect the way the music has to be heard or the music is taught or music is performed a teacher when teaching this uh, kriti for instance will never say that okay this is the gandhara sing the gandhara and then apply the ornamentation that is absurd that is not even possible if you do it that way you won't even get this sound re ga you have to hear it and absorb it and produces as as is so the swara and the gamaka are actually an integrated whole even when you listen to music uh, a connoisseur or a or an informed listener is not going to sit back and say okay this is the gandhara and this is this particular gamaka that is applied to it that is not how it works so gamaka as i said this is a generic term gamaka is a generic term for these various kinds of ornamentations that are applied to swaras that can be seen as being applied to swaras which is why which is why we hear we get these kind of musical sounds how how do you analyze this how how do you describe it? how do you analyze it if you want to a musician a performer doesn't have to a listener also doesn't have to really analyze it but when we are trying to describe this music and understand it in a course like this this is this is one way to go about it na na but I, there is no single pitch here na Uh, this is the gandhara and we say ga ga ma pa ga ma even here ga ma pa ga ga ma pa the plain notes are just this ga ga ma pa but in the context of a raga like khara khara priya which is a major raga in carnatic music ga ga ma pa ri ga ga ma pa ma pa ma ga ma ga ri this is how we can understand this music that like we have gandhara but the gandhara is treated with this kind of a gamaka ma re ma this is a different kind of gamaka and all these gamakas have names we do categorize them we, we can uh, talk about some of the major gamakas that we hear in carnatic music and beyond a certain point we cannot possibly talk about all the uh, subtle movements that 
that characterizes Carnatic music. We cannot exhaustively describe Carnatic music by talking of all the gamakas. There are many, many subtle movements that must remain beyond uh, description. A gamaka is in the context of a raga. A gamaka is applied to the swara in the context of a raga. The same swara in the raga may have different gamakas given the context. And not all swaras in the, in the raga will have gamakas. Simply from the point of view of uh, how one can receive this music. In, if, if every swara is given some kind of ornamentation, then it is just going to get too ornate and too difficult to absorb. So, anything at all can be relished when there is something to contrast it, something to give relief. So, we have plain notes too, like so, Ri and Ma are mostly plain. Ri, Ga, Ga, Ma, Pa, Ma, Pa, Ma, Pa, Ma, Ga, Ma, Ga, Di. Now, if you're going to shake everything, Ri, Ga, Ma, Pa, Ma, Ga, Di. This may get uh, a little too heavy and not quite aesthetic. So the other um, one important aspect of Gamaka is the that it has an internal tempo. There is an internal what is called Kala Pramana, which is which essentially translates into tempo. So this this movement, the shaking or uh, pushing or pulling or gliding, whatever the kind of ornamentation, there is a certain tempo that is appropriate to its delivery. So, to take the same example, now if you want to sing, that won't work. This also will not be appropriate. This is not how it is done. There is a tempo for the gamaka and only when it is delivered with that tempo will be effective. And once in the context of a raga, a particular swara has to be treated with a certain gamaka, then it is not optional. It is not as if uh, the musician can decide, okay, now I will sing it with ornamentation, now not with ornamentation. When we say that a raga is basically made of swaras, that as I said is only at a very surface level. The swara with the gamaka, that is what constitutes, comprises the raga. And how do you know what gamaka to apply when and whether to apply or not apply? You just know it when you have learnt so many compositions, and you have learnt and you have heard so much of uh, music by masters. You absorb it and you know it. And there is really no right or wrong when we speak of ragas and I mean, there are some things that are clearly wrong. You know, if you sing uh, an alien note in Karahara Priya, for instance, Karahara Priya uh, does not have the, does not have re one. And if you sing re one, that's clearly wrong. But there are certain grey areas. For instance, re re ga ma pa pa ma ga re. Now this kind of ga, the kind of gamaka that you apply, sometimes. Uh, there are grey areas and we have uh, 
master musicians or anybody who is an aficionado, the most you can, you can say is that it is not appropriate. It is, you can't say that it's incorrect. But appropriateness, what the Tamil word for it is puruttam, the Sanskrit word would be auchitya. Is it uchita? Is it appropriate? Is it, uh, does it have puruttam in the context? That is what you can talk about. And, and really in art, this, is, this can only be the yardstick. You can have right and wrong up to a certain level, but beyond that, when artistry sets in, the yardstick becomes that much more um, not very objective. And yet, um, there will be uh, mostly some agreement that it is not quite appropriate or it is all right, it will work. That sort of um, judgments do happen all the time in art, in music, in Carnatic music especially. Na 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 no. Da da di na 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 na. Da da na. Mmm. -hmm. 